there isn't anything more that you would ever need to hear. Now, how you come to really believe it won't come from hearing these words. It comes from your own personal experience. And so we have a lot to talk about together. We want to talk about the details of your life that are important to you. We want to help you figure out how to adjust your vibrations so that you can be in a stance of receiving what you want. But in order for you to really be ready to do that, we want you to know that it's a simple process. This business of creating that you are all about is a much simpler process than you have let yourself believe. Most of it happens just by your existence here with others. As you explore life and observe it through your physical senses, you come to conclusions even if you don't speak them out loud about what you prefer. That's step one of the creative process. That's the asking part and it matters a lot. Step two is this inner being part of you that we've been describing here receives your request and becomes the vibrational equivalent of the answer. So that means if you will think about it that when you ask no matter how loud or subtle your request is source answers and answers immediately. But you have to come with us in this strange world that we are talking about. Out of the world of action and out of the world of trying to make sense of what others are doing. You have to step in to a vibrationally sensing world in order to really understand what we're saying to you here. Because when you ask, it is given to you immediately and it is given to you in the early form of creation which is a vibrational form a vibrational form that has the full potential just like the seed that you put in the ground has the full potential to be the stalk of corn it has the full potential of this vibration turning into things turning into experiences turning into the full blossoming see it here it smell it taste it touch it manifestation that you desire but it isn't like that right at first if there were a way that we could just zap you with understanding that when you ask it is given to you and that it is real and that that vibrational request that has been answered is real time, it is current time and that what you call now that you launched a request from is really past tense. But it's hard for you to hear that because you think in terms of what you can hear and see and smell and taste and touch you think of that as reality and you think of it as current tense you think it is of now but we want you to hear try just a little bit we want you to hear that once it is manifested it's really old news because it has been in the process of becoming for quite a long while and as it has been in the process of becoming that's where all your juice is that's where all your joy is what's already manifested that's like the gum you've already chewed the flavor out of it's still in your mouth you can still blow a bubble but it is not where the emotion is it's not where the exhilaration is it's not where your interest is it's not where your life is the best part of your life is consciously understanding and therefore witnessing vibrations turning to thoughts and thoughts turning to things. And it's just a steady stream of them. You're turning them to things which gives you a new list of things to ask for. So it's just this constant cycle of becoming that is life. You are eternal beings. It is our desire to talk you into being excited about the becoming, more excited about the becoming than about what has already become. We want you to feel the fun of energies coalescing in order to satisfy the intentions that you hold. We want you to feel the power of your being and the worthiness of your being and all of the help that the non-physical energies are offering to you. We want you to open yourself to the wholeness of who you are. We want you to be all that you are and not pinch yourself off so much from all that you are. So you must understand that step one is asking and life will just cause you to do that. Your observation of life insists on that. So step one happens naturally and so does step two because that's not your work. That's the focus of your non-physical. But step three is where you line up with what source knows about what you want. You can't say, I want more money, but look, I don't have enough. You can't plead your case of neediness and be in vibrational alignment with abundance because every subject is two subjects what is wanted and absence of it and so 
without meaning to, lots and lots of people use words that sound like abundance and happiness and love, but they are vibrationally vacant in their experience because they're focused upon not enough love and not enough money and not enough, not enough, not enough. In the erroneous belief that if you plead a case, someone will help you. And we want you to understand that that is true. If you plead a case, someone will help you. When you ask, it is given, but you still got to let it in. You've got to let it in. So the operative word is, you've got to allow it. You've got to get into the receiving mode. Somehow, you have to prepare your receiver so that you can translate these vibrations into their vibrationally, physical, manifestational, see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, equivalent. You're the one. And at first, this just sounds like, oh, it sounds like we're reading your mind. It's really interesting. <laughs> It sounds like hard work. It sounds like I'll believe it when I see it. It sounds like, Abraham, can't you just talk about something tangible that I understand? <laughs> and we know that until you find a way to get into that receiving mode that we talk incessantly about and to know for sure that you're in the receptive mode so that you can with confidence follow the impulse but then these are just more words. It's just somebody else who's got another great idea about how your life could be better if you just try harder. We are not interested in you trying harder because effort works against you. We're interested in you getting in sync with the laws of the universe and letting the leverage that you've already accomplished, the leverage of syncing up with your inner being, with source energy, with infinite intelligence, with the energy that creates worlds and letting all of that momentum work for you. So that's what we're gonna talk about with you today. As you have different things that you wanna talk about, we'll talk about your physical life if you want to, and we'll help you with your attitude about it because your mood or attitude about things is really the strongest indication that you have about why things are working the way you want them to or why things aren't working for you the way you want them to. And it is our knowing that as these hours pass by and as you play with us with interest and some willingness to accept that these are universal laws and that the more you understand them, the more control you will have not only over the outcome of your experience, but over the experience of the outcoming becoming. It's the journey, it's the journey, it's the journey. You hear that so much, you don't want to hear it. It's the journey and you say, all right, I'll say it's a journey, but I'll sure be glad when I get there. <laughs> and we say, you're not ever gonna get there because as soon as you get to where you thought you wanted to be, there's a whole new set of contrasting experiences that causes you to launch a whole new rocket. So it turns out you're not ever gonna get it done and you will never get it wrong. It's just this ongoing becoming that you can't get out of. And so we're here to help you to enjoy what you are eternally caught up in. That sounded a little treacherous, didn't it? <laughs> you're trapped in life. You can't get out. Even if you croak, you might as well start having fun. That really is our message. <laughs> and we remember you. We know who you are. We know what you meant when you came. We know where you are in relationship to all of that. In fact, one of the things that we want to put out here right in the beginning of this conversation is that your inner being knows where you are in relationship to everything that you want and knows the path of least resistance to help you get to where you want to be. And so that's big news. That means that tuning in to your inner being is really a valuable thing relative to things that you were born intending to do or relative to things that you care about right now. Esther couldn't find a gold pen one time and it was so upsetting to her. She looked for it for days and 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 days and, days and couldn't find it because you can't find something that you believe is lost. Your beliefs prevent you from your desires. If you believe it's lost, it doesn't matter how much you want it. 
and it doesn't matter how much source is telling you right where it is, your belief that it is lost will override that, you see. So you got to stop holding so hard to beliefs because beliefs are just thoughts that you continue to think. And some of them serve you and some of them don't. But when a belief is blocking you or preventing you from receiving the path to what you want to receive, then it's worth letting go of it a little bit, don't you think? And so we'll talk about things today that will help you to figure out how to be kinder to yourself in that regard. Esther couldn't find her pen, couldn't find her pen, couldn't find her pen, couldn't find her pen. Then, did you hear us say the words path of least resistance? The path of least resistance is the path that your inner being knows you are most likely to take given the beliefs that you hold. That's what path of least resistance is. It's the path that your inner being knows is the best path for you, the most likely path that you will take given the beliefs that you hold. So, since Esther believed her pen was lost and she felt really bad about it because it was a gift from someone she cared very much about, it cost a lot of money and she loved writing with that pen. She was really suffering. We know it sounds silly, but you do it too. <laughs> she was suffering over the loss of this pen. So we tried to show her where it was. She went to the purse where it was so many times, felt around it. It was a big bag. She loses umbrellas in it sometimes too. But <laughs> she felt all around in it, dumped it upside down, finally accepted that it was gone. And then one day, if, several days later, she was looking for a perfume spray. And she remembered where she had last seen that. That's us, you see, that's us. That's us giving her a thought. And we caught her at a non-resistant time because she wasn't looking for her pen. And so she reached right into that bag for that perfume sprayer and came right out with her pen. <laughs> that had always been there that she could not find. And so this is what we want you to hear. Your beliefs prevent you from the ideas, from being in the right place, from the timing. Your beliefs sometimes work against your own desires, but your inner being knows what your desires are, what your beliefs are, and how to guide you around them. And your inner being is not saying, oh, you need to get rid of all of those beliefs. Your inner being is saying, we're good. We can guide you around them, but you gotta listen. Uh-oh, that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> because you're not listening. You're over here sometimes, usually pretty much all the time, <laughs> defending your beliefs, trying to get other people to believe them too. And as you defend beliefs that work against you, you get some pretty strong momentum going, such strong momentum that almost nobody can talk you out of them. And you know, because you've been in conversations with others where you've tried to talk them out of their stupid beliefs, haven't you? You have those conversations, they just don't get it, they just won't listen. Everything you say, they've got something right back. It's just that standoff and nobody gets any movement in anything. So I want to talk about how you can get around that. There are some ways. We'll give them to you as we move along. So, you ready? You know what you want to talk about? Are you ready to expect that whatever matters to you will be satisfied here today, yes. even if you don't come to the hot seat. Yes. Because we know what you're about, and we know what you're about, <laughs> and we know who is the most likely to have a conversation to answer what you're about. So it's gonna be really good. What do you want? It's really good. There's a lot of trouble in this room. <laughs> We're going to have a good conversation. Begin right here.